Randy, on the floor of MBAA 2013, we're midway through a very exciting convention, a lot of interesting things, nothing particularly revolutionary, but there's an evolutionary change in the industry. We're keeping up with the times. We're dealing with a lot of outside factors that are quasi-negative. But one of the things that is uh, that the industry is having time to do under the circumstances is kind of do a little naval inspection here and look internally, see what's going on, think about their operations and how they can make those operations more efficient more safe and ultimately more rewarding for everybody involved. And when it comes to unusual attitudes, when it comes to upset training, that's a, a subject near and dear to my heart, so speak on, brother. Well, Jim, you know that there is an increasing awareness of loss of control in flight accidents and the upsets that, that lead to those. APS is uh, really focused on upset prevention recovery training. What most of your viewers probably won't be aware of is that UPRT is going to be taking on an increasing role in overall pilot training. The FAA announced in July of this year that beginning next year, all airline transport pilots will have to have some component of academic and simulation simulator-based upset prevention and recovery training, which is, of course, our specialty. We do the majority of our training in extra 300 aircraft. We have nine aircraft worldwide. Six of them are based in Phoenix at the Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport. I operate an operation in the Dallas, Texas area at the Arlington Municipal Airport, and we have two aircraft located in Europe in the Netherlands. And then in addition to the on-aircraft training, we will transition pilots that choose to do so into a level D simulator, and we also have available the opportunity to fly an A4, which is based out of our Phoenix location. The A4 gives us the ability to train our clients in the high altitude, high mock environment that business pilots are generally operating in in the aircraft that they fly. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. How is the business aviation community, who frankly needs it more than anybody because training is so uneven and so in some cases haphazard, how is this community embracing this concept? As corporate flight departments are looking at their overall exposure to risk, they're identifying upsets and uh, loss of control as being a major area where they can mitigate risk. And the only real good way to do that is through training. It's a pilot-centered problem, unlike controlled flight and terrain, which we were able to sort of beat into submission through technological means with JIPWIS, ground proximity warning systems, terrain awareness warning systems, even better uh, synthetic vision. Uh, from a loss of control standpoint, it really comes back to the pilot and pilot training. We've had an increasing appreciation of the psychological aspects of upset. It turns out brains work on sort of two parallel circuits. The one that you and I are working on right now is a frontal lobe. We're thinking clearly. But in the upset world, sometimes our cognitive skills can be compromised, to put it mildly and we need to have a certain amount of practice in advance of that type of a situation to put in place the skills that would be necessary. Well, let me give you a scenario here. Joe, junior pilot, I work for XYZ Manufacturing. We're running around an old Falcon 20. The boss has finally been convinced by the chief pilot, boss cheapskate uh, par excellence. Doesn't understand the value, but we've convinced him. So we're sending pilots out to you to be able to bring that kind of knowledge to, to the fleet what is going to happen when we show up on your door? Well, before you even show up on our door ready to spend money, one of the things that APS offers is the opportunity to do an evaluation flight. We're willing to actually provide people a glimpse of our training. It's a two-hour exposure to our academics. We show what those academics constitute and why they're covered. And then a flight of the aircraft where we'll give you a menu of various maneuvers and things that we cover, let people pick the things that they have interest in or questions about. So in a four-hour period, we can let people fly with us for free and determine if they want to sign up an entire flight department. Now, we think that that's rather unique within the industry. We do that because we are confident that the more people know about the training that we provide, the better we look and the more they're going to be interested in flying with us. To the scenario that you just talked, we had a, a situation not long ago, not unlike uh, what you described. It was a, a Lear uh, crew 
that had a, an upset that rolled them to 120 degrees of bank. A young, a young uh, pilot flying uh, was flying with a, a senior uh, flying manager uh, for the department and calmly uh, executed the, the recovery strategies that he had been trained in at APS. Uh, successful outcome. Well, a little later in the flight, the CEO who was flying in back came up and said, so what was that all about? And they explained what had happened, why it was a, a wake vortex encounter, unexpected, and that it had been handled through the training that had been provided at APS. And the CEO said, well, you'll never have to worry about me writing checks for that training again. And we have lots of stories like that, and many of them are available on our website, APStraining.com, that has not just our words, but testimonials, videos from people that have trained with us. And I'd listen to those words. Those pilots don't have any vested interest. They just are trying to relate to other pilots the training experiences that they had working with us. Rebuilding the sport aviation world one aviator at a time. That's ANN's new Aerosports ebook series, your resource guide to the ultimate in aviation adventures. Aerosport will feature the straight skinny on learning and enjoying 16 unique aviation sports, from ultralights and ballooning to aerobatics, gyroplanes and hang gliders to parachuting, home builds and general aviation to RC models. All this and more will be coming soon with the new updatable Aerosport guide for your favorite electronic devices. Get your advance order in now at www aero-sport.net Nothing quite impresses the boss with a need for this like a change of laundry. That's exactly right. Uh, we're happy that here at NBAA that the mitigation value of our training has been noticed by the insurance community. We announced here along with CAE, our partners that we use for simulation, with Swiss Re, an opportunity for flight departments to have up to 10% of their premiums, up to $25,000, applied towards training and upset prevention and recovery training with us from Swiss Re. This is Swiss Re's way of providing a funnel, if you will, incentivizing the training that they believe will reduce their exposure. And so we're very happy to be partnered with a company like Swiss Re that is showing that they have a proactive and progressive view of how this training can be used to, to make flying safer.